Okay, Mohammed and I were chatting. He started a new page in his life. He started his university life. So it's a huge, huge transition when you individuate and you go into establishing yourself as an adult. I don't mean just in terms of having an event happen. It's really a big transitional point in our life because you're moving from being a child, a youth, a dependent into the individual that you're going to express and present yourself to the world. So it's a transition. It's not just a change. And there's a difference between transition and change. You can change homes, but you transition from being a schoolboy to being a university graduate and so on. So it's very important to prepare to the next to prepare the next platform. Um, which is why I chose Unbox because it's like a, it stands for the, the N stands for preparing the next platform. So the more that you prepare mm. for the next platform before you jump, before you take a leap, the easier it would be to make that leap. So however small mm. the changes are, that transition to an entirely new level, if you like, will be a lot easier because you allowed yourself to emotionally get used to it. You allowed yourself psychologically, mentally, in every way. You've prepared your energy, your chakras, your, your whole mindset, really. So everything will work together at the same time. So it's no good just working on emotions, but not working on your mind. It's no good working on your mind, but not working on your belief system. But if you do it all together, all the four dimensions of change, and don't forget, um, hi, Jody, hi, Elvita. Just say hi if you want to say anything or unmute your mic when you want to. So good to see you. And uh, hi, Jody, how are you? I've been following your your dog on Instagram. I'm glad <laughs> yes. it's so nice to see. <clears throat> so we were just talking um, about what we're transitioning into because I really think we're not just going through changes, we're going through a major transition worldwide. And I don't mean just economically and politically, politically, I also mean energetically. Things have been happening since 2012. So, you know, at that time, we were all preparing and building up for 12, you know, 12, 12. But I think this one is even amplifying the changes because physically on a manifest level, we've been seeing a lot of structures change financially, politically, in every way, people are changing. But what is more difficult now is if you're not aware of the subtle changes, you can't grasp hold of the little threads that will lead you to whatever is changing on a bigger picture. Does that make sense? Are you with me, guys? So the yes. subtle changes are so yes. subtle I was thinking about this the other day. They're so subtle. Some changes are not subtle. I think they're part of life, part of the cycle of life. Yeah, so we're celebrating 30 years. We're celebrating my 60th birthday. We're celebrating 30 years of working with people, which has really enriched my own life because I could see patterns within patterns. Like every week, every month, my clients would have similar problems. Here or in London, it's the same. And I'll go, oh, what's going on? So I think about it and I think about every new moon. What does it mean? What is it the beginning of um, every full moon? Um, I don't sleep during full moon nights. I just can't sleep. You know, I feel the energy. And when I know that I can't sleep and then I look at my calendar and I remember, aha, uh -huh, it's the full moon. So indirectly or directly, I don't consciously think about it, but it does affect me because the more you become aware, the more you're able to detect the subtle changes. Mm. So when they're subtle, listen to people's voices, you know, listen to sounds. Um, we spoke before about content and container, you know, the yang and the yin. On a higher level or a more, um, I don't want to use higher level, but the changes that we're going through now, the container is very important, but it's not a physical container. So what holds the structure of our life is now more the rhythm. You know, what is the rhythm of your day? What is the rhythm of your week? What is the rhythm of your month? So it's even more important to have a diary, a physical diary that you write things down, that you see where your life is going. Um, you wake up in the morning and you put three goals down. All of these things will pin 
pin you down like a tent you know pin you down on the ground so that you can progress with your day so if every day goes smoothly then every week will go smoothly every month and therefore every year so you need to pin yourself down with the subtleties okay another thing that i really want to impress because no matter what you do you might get stuck or feel that nothing is moving on it is because we can no longer progress in one area without working on the other areas there's an expression in english i don't know muhammad if you know it it's like the eye of the needle so you cannot go through the eye of the needle if everything is not in alignment and smooth about you so it's no good saying for example oh i'll start a hobby when i have money and when my job is going well because that is not happening it's not going to happen if things are not happening the big things that you want are not happening it is because you've been given time, if you like, by the energies um, to work on the little things that you did not work on. Not just the little things, but sometimes it's the big things. Like I have a theme in my life that every time I try and tackle something happens and I let go and I don't do anything about it. And in the last couple of weeks or so, I just got so frustrated with myself and I said, why isn't this working, you know? um why can't i do it uh, why didn't i start it and then i thought wait a minute ask your brain the question in a different way so instead of asking why i can't do it why am i not doing it why haven't i started it or whatever it is i said okay who can help me do it what what do i need to do in order to get this done and within three days i remembered to ask the person i remembered who to ask and I did ask him and he did direct me to the right person and now I'm doing it. It's such a small change, but it made the whole difference. And the other thing, I'm just summing up all the weeks that we've been talking about, we spoke a lot about dreams. Dreams are not only subtle, but they are your unconscious. Dreams are formed by the unconscious. Self-growth, self-awareness is about becoming more conscious. So one way of becoming more conscious so that you can hold yourself accountable for the life that you create is working with your dreams. If you don't understand the language of your own mind, then how can you create the life that you want? So I, I um, read something the other day about dreams that if you live to be 80 years old, you would have spent 20 years dreaming. So can you imagine spending 20 years with someone and you're not listening to them? So you need to start working with your dreams. Again, another journal. I don't know if I um, told you this, but one way of, of making myself do the things that I really want to do is I dangle a carrot. And I love stationery and I love writing longhand. So I really get like kind of really neat notebooks. This one is designed by Lebanese artists and it's made from recycled paper. And I just love the visual and I love the little um, quotes on their notebooks. So I got a whole bunch so I can keep my victory log, my dream log and my body and emotions journal. So when you work with me and many of you, um, all of you in fact did, um, I really do what I what I suggest that you do because it has worked for me so I'm just passing a shortcut to you because it is so effective dreams writing things down pin your rhythm your time now is more important in a way than decluttering like two years ago through through um throughout lockdown many of my clients had to declutter including myself so it was about moving moving physical stuff preparing the ground for carrying on, for taking a bigger leap. Now we're dealing with subtleties. Can you think of the subtle changes that you have been either going through or feeling? You know, it could be as subtle as, oh, I don't like sushi anymore, or I don't wanna eat meat anymore, or anything small, you know, like your shopping list has changed, you know, grocery shopping list has changed, or, the people that you really love to have, you know, afternoon coffee with, you no longer like to. Have you noticed anything like that? And what have you done about it? You can unmute and, and, and just you know, or raise a hand or. Can I go? Yeah, yeah. So I've cleaned out my closets and got rid of so many things. Okay. Like four bags of it. Okay. Um, I'm into like 
I'm looking at myself. I'm like, that's it. I need new clothes. And I went online and got so many like new sh shirts and sweaters and stuff of color. Like I, I was like, why is there so much black in my wardrobe? I'm like, yeah. I need much more color. I, I, I went through the same thing. I'm wearing this tonight because it's my mother's and it has a star. But mm. really I had a lot of beige, brown, black in my wardrobe. <laughs> And systematically over the last, especially over the last two, three years, I'm fed up. I just want color around, you know, um, whatever, everywhere. Painting, wardrobe, furniture. I've been repainting everything. That's a big change, Jody, especially color, because mm -hmm. color is light. So some aspects of you have changed that you no longer want that drab or dull or whatever statement that you were making. So Even my bedroom furniture, I'm changing that too. Like I'm doing a few pieces in the bedroom. I'm like, I'm sick of it. I can't look at it anymore. Well done. Well done. May I suggest that you don't just throw, but recycle? Like, do you have clothes bank or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I did. I, I donated. Yeah, because I think whatever is not useful, no longer useful to you, it could be exactly what someone else needed. Or give to my friends or yes, coworkers. Yes, or it makes like me that. happy. Uh, before... We had a thing here called the bizzle, which is, I forgot what's the American equivalent, but you know, where you put stuff up for sale. Okay. And people used to buy it very quickly, but now the mood has changed. Um, the makeup, I think, of, of the people have changed. So things are not selling, but if I put them outside, you know, on the corner, immediately they disappear. Somebody will come and pick up something. And actually, I, in fact, it makes me happier. So I'd rather know that you know, and I see them picking it up and they're happy about it. They're used, you know, they're, um, it's so useful to them. So I'm not like upset that I can't sell it or whatever it is. Whereas a few years ago, I really wanted to resell. I mean, I don't know why, you know, but I wanted to kind of like recycle the money. But now I'm thinking about recycling the need for filling somebody else's need rather than just, you know, go through the chagrin of actually selling it, posting it, la, 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 la. I don't care if it's useful to someone, if they pick it up then good for them. So you, Jody, changing furniture, changing colors is super amazing. I even wanted to put highlights in my hair. I feel like it's too dark. Yeah, yeah, I feel like yeah, yeah. Next month I'll do that too. I never ever thought of changing. I would change the color of my hair because I used to pride myself, you know, my eyes, my hair are the same color. But things change and I, I wanted to have highlights. I wanted to change color of my wardrobe and so on. Fantastic. Now, why did you and I and everyone else do that? This is resonance. So when you change on the inside, inadvertently your world, the physical world outside needs to catch up. I was talking to a client about two weeks ago, and I think she mentioned that she hasn't changed anything in her house for 20 years. I mean, okay, granted, maybe everything is fantastic and beautiful, but you may want to change its location. You may want to shift pieces around or paint things around. And she was feeling so frustrated. And we kept talking and talking until we figured it out. We both came to the conclusion that she needs to freshen things up. These are the subtleties. So the older, not the older, the more aware or higher you grow up, the, the higher your level of awareness is, those little things can really hold you back and block your path you know like a balloon with a very long tether they will hold you back although you're still growing up so you need to pay attention to the subtleties whatever they are whatever physically you need to pay attention is it the right color is it the right shape is it in the right location is it uh, does it express who i am i mean that's the whole point of changes you know does it express who i am does it fulfill my need does it fulfill the function that i want it for whether it's actually people or furniture it's the same, you know, sometimes I used to really make an effort to see people and then like in the last six months or so i'm like why. You know what does it add to my life, what do I add to their life it's just like a superficial meeting, so I cut those out because I need to create space to do the things that I truly yearn for so if everything stays the same, then nothing is going to transition and change. So don't be don't be frightened of change. I used to be, I mean, it used to really shake me to the ground, but now I see it as a new page, a blank canvas, and I can truly um, create a new. So whatever mistakes I made in the past, then I can avoid them and make new ones, which is more interesting. <laughs> have you been doing the chakra sounds? I can't impress because now we have entered 
if you will, the age of vibration, of sound, of subtleties, um, of resonance, and you need to use these guys. I've sent it to all of you. Um, Helene, I don't know if you've received it or not, but if you send me a message on WhatsApp, I'll send you that exercise. It's a very brief exercise through breathing and chanting sounds, and you bring yourself into alignment. So I wanna hear from you, anyone, if you have tried those, what other changes like Jody have you been going through? Or Jody, maybe you wanna say something else? I don't know. Do you wanna share something else? Okay, it's okay. By the way, you were saying about a full moon. I had this dream last night, strange enough, that it was like a full moon and the water was so high in my dream. Okay. And I woke up, it was like three o'clock in the morning and I couldn't go back to sleep. So I started when, again in closet. When was that? Like now? Two days last ago? Last night. Yeah, last night. Actually. Last night I couldn't sleep. And then I thought it was a full moon, but it's not. It's the new moon. But I think it's a very important new moon because emotionally I felt very restless as well. Dreaming of water is actually emotions and the moon rules emotions. So you went through a lot of changes. Maybe now you're going through similar changes to do with emotional, but on a different level, because you said the water was really high. Do you remember if the water was clear, muddy? I feel like it was like dark, like it was like dark water and it was high. Like on, it was near where I live on the rocks and it was so, so high. Something about the water being high and Okay, wavy, you, wavy. you prepare for the full moon, which is in about, I don't know, 12 days. I think today we are the third day of the new moon. So that should be coming up in just under two weeks. Um, make a list of whatever, presumably emotions, emotion, things that you want to change or the way you feel, you know, how do you want to feel? What what would bring about what can you imagine or think of that can bring about a positive emotional state do you remember last time when i said whatever you can't imagine you can't manifest you can't create so imagination but also emotions are the two triggers like connecting a battery that will make things happen if you can't feel the happiness um you know falling in love uh, having lots of money whatever it is that you want to achieve in life if you cannot feel it if you cannot live that memory now and imagine it in all its details so the feeling is the heart and the imagination um is the six you know the third eye but it's also the higher spiritual level where we form the template of what we're trying to manifest the two together when they're anchored in your memory then it becomes a lot easier for your brain to write the algorithm or, or the formula to make them manifest. So that's what we need to focus on, imagining things and feeling, feeling the end result, feeling the relief, feeling how I want to live or how I want to be or how I want to shop, no matter how silly it is. In fact, the sillier, the better, because it's easier for us to imagine, I don't know, a new wardrobe than to imagine extreme happiness. So, you know, climb that ladder step by step is what I'm saying, just get on the wheel, and then you can go to higher. So if you can every day, three times a day, just take one minute, literally, it doesn't need to be a meditation, one minute, three minutes, whatever you can afford to, imagine and feel. So what is it that I want to create? You know, what does it feel like? What does it look like? What are the colors? What does it smell like? Use your inner senses. So the inner senses, whatever your five senses are, there is an equivalent on the inside use the five senses in your imagination you know see the color vividly smell the scent of whatever it is you're trying to create um, use everything the touch even in everyday life become aware of how you can sense how deeply are you aware or how deeply can you sense pick up information through your five senses particularly touch and sound i find most people find difficult to discern so get used to listening to sounds, you know, do I really like this? Am I really enjoying it? Um, feel different textures and, you know, close your eyes and, and see if you can detect the difference between the page and the desktop or whatever, you know, your cat and your dog. It's very important now to do this because then you can activate those senses 
on a higher octave and that's really when manifestation happens so remember that so add it in your formula feelings imagination spend time three times a day register the subtleties practice often and then you will find you know that your wheel will start moving again but also moving regularly and smoothly forward so this is where we need to catch up in order to go through the eye of the needle and make it to the next phase of changes and development overall does does that make sense excellent um your dog is distracting me i love animals <laughs> <laughs> he looks so happy. He yeah, he's, so happy. Doing, he's a very happy dog, easy. I'm so, I'm so happy you got him. I mean, we all miss Rocco, I really do. But I'm so glad you got yourself um, a new friend. He, the only thing is he has this separation anxiety that I'm like, if I leave the house, he cries. Do you, you have your sound essences? I, use, I finish them. Okay, because they're good. Um, you can spray them. They work on, on pets beautifully because mm -hmm you know, intellectually, they don't object to them. Um, my cat, did I tell you, had um, like a food poisoning and it was the weekend and the vet wasn't there. I just kept spraying, spraying him and he really calmed down. Um, color, mentally, you know, you can send him a lot of light blue, maybe pink, surround him with pink light so that he feels love, self-love. Um, it could be that, you know, he was separated too early from his mom or whatever it is, I, you know, it's, it's anything like that. He lived with a group for 10 months and then I adopted him at 10 months. So I took him away from his whole pack. So. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's what he got used to and that's what he misses. My mom used to leave, um, whenever she left the house, she used to leave the radio on for the plants. I mean, we didn't have any pets. I think we had a parrot or birds, but they were not indoors. Um, and I'm like, mom, why are you leaving the radio on? And she goes, no, they, they enjoy it. They like it. And they really, you know, group. So maybe leave some music on, leave a little light on. Um, I don't know if you can leave TV on, if it's an- Leave the TV on for him. It helps. He's gotten better, but he still cries. Like a... Oh, I, I, well, I would spray him. If you get a, you know, you just need to get like a one sound essence or something and, and spray him. Um, there's a spray for love, for comfort, and that, that should work. But also if you just visualize light and send it to him through your third eye, it can work as well. Um, try leaving, you know, one of your tops that you wear or, or a towel, but use it because sometimes that smell comforts them, you know, like a baby and, and his mom, he gets used to the smell. And if you put the blanket, they calm down. Animals are the same. Um, I noticed this with my cat. So like whenever I change and I leave my t-shirt on the bed, they, they would come and just, you know, snuggle and sit down and sleep. So sometimes they get anxious because they lose that connection. So leave something of you with your scent and just make it his and let him sleep on it or smell it or, you know. Funny, sometimes he smells my, my, my shirt or my towel from the bathroom and he'll pee on it. Like, yeah, like, because he, he wants to, <laughs> because I think he wants to mark it. Mm -hmm. I don't know, do dogs spray like cats spray? Because that's what one of my cats does. He's spaying. He, he, he just got fixed, but he's still peeing around the house. That's, that's the Maybe it's spraying. I don't know. Do dogs spray? Ask your vet. I really don't know. But I know cats do, and it's not pee. It's spraying. So it's not, it has a different scent, and this is how they mark their territory. So it could be that he's attached to you, and he's afraid, and he doesn't want anyone else to come. Um, but don't punish him, because pets don't understand punishment. You need to reward him. Because if he's trying to get attention, if you reward him, then he is getting the attention, then he'll stop doing it. Because sometimes people do the opposite or they suggested that I do the opposite, it hasn't worked. But if you reward them, then they will understand, okay, I don't need to do that. This is how pets' brains work. And then that will change. So try and like do, I don't know, do something nice, leave something of your own, um, let him get enough of your scent and see if that calms him down. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Elvita, do you want to say anything? I just said you want to say something, so please do. I'm Susanna. Oh, that, oh, no, I was just kind of like um, about what you mentioned about transition. And I just kind of like realized because the last time we talked, for me, the change was so big. And 
and I feel like kind of like wanting such a big change but then you talk about transition like it's very subtle and then oh yeah change doesn't have to be such a huge or big things and and then uh, Jody the mentioned about is, color and then yeah. I do realize that that subtle transition is I am more attracted to bright colors lovely and especially for me something that I wear right now I'm more attracted to color and then for the space that I want to be it's kind of like bring Calm to me is like blue and yellow. Nice. Uh, so it's just kind of like very interesting. And, and you mentioned about when something changes inside. I used to wear all black. My wardrobe was all black. Isn't it amazing? I I think most of us went through that phase, honestly. Like, I don't know what, you know, like they tell you it's the new black. No, enough of that. <laughs> and I think worldwide this year, this winter, apparently, most or major um, designer houses have chosen color for winter and for fall so you don't get to see any black brown or you know whatever um uh, gray coats now they're really really bright colors so i think this is like you know in collective consciousness basically <laughs> people are fed up of the norm and they want color especially after lockdown i i think this is like a unique experience um that children who were alive and lived through it you know, it will mark them forever. So now, you know, we want to break boundaries. We want color. We want to make ourselves comfortable in these little ways, whatever is nagging us, you know, it's like the princess and the pea, you know, you can't sleep under the mattress if it's like that, you know, you have to change things. Yeah. I feel this is like the theme now, you know, I'm fed up of that. I keep hearing it. I'm fed up of this. I want to change. We're no longer putting up with whatever doesn't work. That's the good thing. Now, don't yeah. translate that as depression or whatever, because, you know, a lot of people do. It's not that. It's, it's that you have to change something and you're not acknowledging it, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I also kind of like more becoming more, I try to implement like uh, mindfulness, like becoming more aware. So it becoming aware of, of my emotion. And so I think I'm becoming more intuitive in noticing the, the underneath needs that is not fulfilled. So okay. I usually just kind of like really kind of like uh, emotional, but then it's just like the surface emotion and, and you know, but now it's like when I react to certain uh, event or a conversation I'm like what was that why why well was done. that my reaction well, yeah well done the thing we learned in holistic therapy is to be a curious benign observer so now I catch myself saying oh that's interesting why did I react that way you know not like in a repro reproaching way you know as I used to before like why did I do that why did she upset me now it's like, oh, that's interesting. Why did I lose my temper? <laughs> so when you ask it in that way, the conversation flows and you get to the bottom of where that boy on the surface, you know, of the emotions is floating. You really are guided and then you can really spot. Um, the other question to ask is what belief do I have that brought about that experience? What current belief do I hold? that manifested that experience. Because very often emotional reaction, emotional responses are linked to a belief. So when something goes against what you believe, it will ruffle your feather. Do you see what I mean? So beliefs and emotions go together. But the way to right. gently guide yourself and to get more answers is curiosity. Just be curious as to why you said that. Why did you behave in that way? Or why did that person say that? Or why, that's interesting, I no longer like black and brown. You know, where is that coming from? Um, and then your, your mind, you know, if you ask the subconscious, it will respond. The subconscious is amazing. It always expresses itself. And whatever goes into the subconscious gets there consciously. It's what we go through, what we tell ourselves, you know. Um, so by having a conversation, you are actually engaging your subconscious because it wants to express itself. 
So once the conscious expression changes, or the conscious communication changes, let me say, then the unconscious expression of that belief or experience will change. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense. really that easy, you know, which is why some people, not most, but some like you made a huge change just within three mentoring sessions. Really, I'm so impressed with you. God bless you. Because there was such force that you wanted to embrace all these changes that you're going through and you made it happen. So carry on, but please keep the journal, keep the victory log, um, just for your own, you know, for your own sake, so that you can have legs to keep your tabletops stable. And I still do, and it really saves lives because you, so long as you're having that continuous conversation, then you will find answers. Someone asked me, like, you know, are we evolving forever? Yes. Are we gonna go through changes forever? Yes which is why you need to learn how to mentor yourself, literally. Because think about it, if we're always evolving, even on a molecular atomic level, you know, the body is going through huge changes. A lot of transactions are going through the cells. So why wouldn't the outside world change? You know, plus we're part of a big matrix. You know, there's the earth, the galaxy, the whole universe. So all of that is revolving, changing, etc. So why wouldn't you, your universe change? So it doesn't mean there's something wrong or blocked. It just means you need to reset, upgrade and become more aware, you know, expand your awareness and have these tools that will always help you to unlock that door, answer questions and prepare yourself to the next level. So yeah, there will always be changes and they will get more subtle and more subtle. So you need to kind of teach yourself how to grab the beginning of the thread and then you know, you, you, you'll you catch whatever the change that you need to make and, and how to act on it. Does that help yeah. guys? Helene, are you there? Do you wanna say anything? Do you need help with anything? Suzanne, I'm any, good. Thank you. Any any dreams, any observations you've noticed about yourself, about your life in the last few months? I want to ask you something. Sure. How can we self that I'm not being triggered a lot from the negative people that we are? Uh, <laughs> you need to empty because Suzanne, we keep going to that point. You need yeah. to empty your cup. Think about it. We talked about resonance. If you're carrying something within your container, then you will react. If your container is clear, then there's nothing to react to, no matter what people say or do. So it's almost like they're plucking your string, you know, like when you play a guitar note. So they, they really, literally in English, you know, we say they push your buttons. So if you have buttons, they will be pushed, but that's an indication. So this is when you start that conversation with yourself. Why am I reacting in that way? Why do I feel they're negative? You know, what belief within me is triggering that experience? So for example, if you believe people can make you feel negative, you will feel negative. But the minute you feel I am responsible for my own happiness, I choose not to react that way, have a big smile on your face, nobody's gonna ruin my day, then really nobody will ruin your day. I mean, I have these conversations with myself like, okay, I can't do anything about that, but I choose to be happy. I choose to have a nice day and I will get up and I will put perfume on or I will put my um, Bluetooth speaker. I took it to the garden today. Um, you know, I put music, things that will, so you have, you are in charge of your own happiness. So emotional triggers are an opportunity to release old traumas, whatever they are. So basically our past, if we don't process it, do you remember when we spoke about the two currents, the current of manifestation and the current of liberation? So this is always happening. So we need to release old experiences in order to invite and create new positive ones through our awareness. So all these things, negativity, the people who are triggering you, they're giving you an opportunity to look inside and see, okay, why do I feel that way? Why am I giving them power? Does the power lie within me? I choose to, to be the reason or the cause of my own happiness. Regardless of what's going in life, 
you can choose how to react to them. You can't change them, but you can choose the way you react to a situation. Does that make sense? So you need to hold yourself responsible. So if the world comes down on you, don't come down on yourself. Make yourself happier. Do things that makes you happier. Pay attention to what you need to do rather than how you need to react to people. Just smile and walk away or, or don't see them that often or, you know, like a garden, weed them out and start putting new people in that give you support instead of people who give you a hard time because they're going through a hard time. Obviously, mm -hmm. remember, every container will express what is in, within it. So these people are being whatever negative or behaving in an obnoxious, obnoxious way. It's because of what is inside them. So how can you make someone else happier if you're lacking that on the inside? So a lot of times people's problems are their problems, but we make them our own. So disengage, take the power back and start building legs to the table to keep your table top up. Okay, yes. Okay. Make a list. May I add to that, Sahar? Yeah, please, Elvita, do. Yeah, I, the one, what, like your advice that I still hold true to this day it was like you told me to remind myself to like does it serve my highest purpose Bravo, thank so you. so before I met you I was very easy to get affected by people around me and and it and then when you told me to when I becoming agitated by people by environment around me just kind of like to 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 stop like uh, and then tell myself as yes, does it serve my highest purpose and I've been doing that and I noticed like it's becoming easier no it doesn't serve me anything it's only it doesn't serve me anything it's not going to make my day better so it becoming over time for me it's kind of like Bravo. Easier to let go. It's not my problem. It's their problem. How they react yeah. is their problem. It's not on me. Well done. Exactly. Another way of asking that question is, am I enjoying feeling that way? Am I enjoying thinking in this way? Um, because if it doesn't bring joy, then you're putting the toxins in, regardless of what they did. The way you react is how you're triggering your hormonal system, your nervous system. So you're doing that because whatever they did is done. Yes. Past. But the way we react is what triggers. So, you know, like, does it serve my higher purpose? Another question is, am I enjoying it? Am I enjoying feeling miserable? Am I enjoying feeling lonely? Am I enjoying feeling triggered? If the answer is no, then immediately I choose to think differently. I choose to feel differently. I choose to act differently. I mean, one thing I learned, um, you know, from the British living in England for so long is they really hold their emotional response, you know, like you could ask them a question, which is embarrassing, for example, and it's none of your business. They wouldn't say, oh, it's none of your business. They just smile and turn their face and or ask you another question. And they totally ignore the fact that you've just asked them that question. And that, that has never occurred to me as a response. Like I choose not to answer that, you know, I choose not to engage in on that level, if you see what I mean. Um, so I always thought that was interesting. And just by making that small change, you can divert or rechannel, you know, how a conversation or a negotiation or an interview or anything, any interaction can go. If you watch those little transitional points and you change the dial, you know, you react differently, then the whole course of the conversation or the event can go very differently. Yes, I got your point. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. I, I want to hear one day that I'm doing really well. I'm happy. <laughs> Suzanne. <laughs> Just yes. apply, apply what we've been talking about. Believe me, you're very intelligent and you know, you did a lot. You achieved a lot. Thank but you. use, use these little things because it is so important. I don't want to say control, but I want to say harness because I love being emotional. I think if I wasn't emotional, I wouldn't be sensitive and, intu and intuitive. And you know, my mentors used to say, you're very dramatic 
but you know change the drama into passion and i thought okay great so i began to see myself as passionate and then i began to ask myself well how else can i express this passion and then you know these creative hobbies came out so it's really being emotional means you are emotional you are dramatic you are passionate ask yourself how can i channel that emotion without having to go through a drama and I bet and you anything, maybe you have a creative talent and ability that you have ignored. Mm. You need to express that ability. You need to read, you know, to, to re divert it. What's the word I'm looking for? You know, to divert that energy and channel it in a different way. And then you couldn't care less about the outside world. You know, paint, write. Um, you know that I write poetry and I translate, you know, Arabic, English, and I write it sometimes in Arabic, I write sometimes in English, and now I'm learning Persian because I think it's really the language of poetry and love. So now I have a third thing and it just opened up a whole universe and, you know, just to keep the creativity going. And, and today in Dubai, although it's fall, it's actually almost like the beginning of spring. The weather is just perfect. And I thought, okay, it's time to pay attention to the garden. So we redesign, move pots around, change things, you know, la la la, and it really feels good. So creative expression can be in any way, in your wardrobe, like Jody was ch saying, you know, changing colors, uh, shifting furniture around. Um, that's a big thing for me in the last six months. You know, it's like almost I have to change the physical space in order to allow myself to grow in the way that I want to grow. Remember mm -hmm. the other question, who am I becoming? because that implies continuous change and continuous evolution. So we are always changing and you will continue to change. And there will be a lot of little subtle things that bug you, but it's normal because these are signs or invitation to change something so that you can find your um, equilibrium. And I mm -hmm. want to just say a special message to um, Muhammad because he's, I think, our youngest member and he started his university. I can also tell you, and I'm sure you guys have noticed, every age has its own problems. Like when I was in my 30s, I don't know, my clients were in their 20s, for example. So I, I've noticed, and then when I was in my 40s, you know, clients in 30s came and whatever. But whatever issues I went through, my clients went through, and now I see the younger generation going through. So there are issues or similar struggles that are to do with how we are individuating, if you see what I mean. So there are issues that is to do with the time, you know, with the 21st, 20, 20, 21st century. There are issues to do with the age of what a person is and if you and i hope you did guys get my new book because it is about self-development yeah tarot for self-transformation allows you to look at your life journey like that of the fool that goes through life changes and three major phases of transition and when you read it you will become aware of what are the subtle changes and what are the transitions and why the same problems happen or occur for everyone you know whether it's love friends marriage job i mean we all go through that so there are generation generational um rites of passage that it doesn't matter where you live you will be going through these we call them problems but really they're keys or an opportunity to evolve and then you've got on top of it the problems of the countries you live in, the problems of the world we live in, the problems of the times we're living in um, added. So they're like it's a matrix, really. So you need to know who you are in order to navigate this matrix safely and always land in the best possible location for you. You know, do your best. Have a fantastic day. Choose to feel happier. Ask the right questions and that will guide you to finding the right answers. So there are things that will change with your age, for example. And I don't mean age just as in numbers, you know, because as you grow more mature, what you want out of life really would be different. I, I don't know how to explain it, but you know, I talk to my friends who are of the same generation um, and how they celebrate it, you know, their birthdays or whatever it is. And we really are going through a change. Uh, you know, what I want today is not what I wanted last year or 10 years ago. 
um, what I would do today is very different than what I would do two years ago even. So, you know, a lot of subtle changes build up to help you make the bigger change in order that you go through that transition. And every day, have a communication with yourself, have a conversation or write something down, but choose to have a very happy thought, the last thing at night, the first thought in the morning, um, make it a positive thought and, and put an invocation. Did you guys ever watch um, What the Bleep movie? I'll send it to you. It's a great movie. I don't know when it was out, 20 years ago or something, but I'll send you the link to watch it on YouTube. And um, one of the questions that one of the speakers said is, what do I want to create with my day today? And I love that question. And I wake up every day and I ask myself, OK, Sahar, what do you want to create with your day today? So one, I'd like to feel that I am in charge, that it is up to me. I have a choice and I want to exercise that choice. That is self-will. You have 24 hours. It's up to you what you're going to do, how you're going to respond, how you're going to react you decide what mood or vibration I want to put myself in. And this is because, you know, when you look at someone, I mean, I don't know if you can, but when you become aware, you have an impression of a person, you know, you might say, oh, no, they're such a positive person, or you say, oh, I'm avoiding them, you know, they're always complaining and they're negative. So everyone has a general vibe, and that vibe, if you will, if it's um, aura color, it will be dictated by their emotional state. So emotional state is so important. It really dictates how you resonate, how you what you know, what do you vibe? What do you what are you vibing? You know, what are you sending out to the world? So if your general emotional state is like, oh, my God, nothing is working out. I'm so lonely. Why haven't I met? Which is now a very popular question. Why haven't I met my right partner and so on? That is such a low vibe, really. But if you choose to wake up in the morning and say, oh, you know, thank God for a new day. What am I going to make today? You know, what mistakes am I going to make today? Because it is interesting. Um, the mistakes you make are an invitation to realign, to correct something. So never be afraid to make mistakes. I, I really, truly love all my mistakes. And I think my life would have been really boring if I didn't make any mistakes, because then I wouldn't have learned the lessons that I have learned. Um, I wouldn't have evolved with my thinking, my way of thinking, or even my thinking process. Um, so I hope you remember that. And I really wanted to kind of summarize the last five weeks to leave you with something that is going to be true no matter what time you listen or you watch this video. You need to do these things. Support yourself. Take charge. You decide how you're going to respond. You decide, am I enjoying this? You decide, what am I going to create today? You need to be in the now. People cannot heal if their mindset is in the past. People cannot create something new if they're always looking to the past. So literally, to download the upgrade, you need to be in the now. You cannot download it if you're blah, complaining about the past or if you're too impatient to go to the future. Pace yourself. That's the rhythm. These are the subtle changes. Find your rhythm. Pace yourself. Take charge. Have a ritual every morning. Decide what are you going to create every evening. You know, end your evening with a positive thought or watch a funny video or whatever it is. So if the first thing in the morning is positive, if the last thing in the evening is positive, then what you will experience in between will be conducive and constructive for you. You know, like sound waves. The sound is actually between the two nodes. It's not in the two. It's not in the space between the two waves. And that's a great thing that really left an impact on me, that the sound is in the beginning, in the end, in what's between. So same thing for the day. You set the tone, you set the vibe for the whole day. And if you can take care of every 24 hours, then that's a whole week taken care of, then that's a whole month taken care of. And soon enough, it will become lifestyle. It will become a way of life that the whole year will be okay. And hopefully the whole decade um, will be okay. Will you remember that? That's my present for you. Really keep listening to this until it goes in. It becomes second nature because that is really the very basics of, of self-awareness. It's not just about self-awareness. It's about how do I make myself happy? Because if our yeah. life is a movie, then what movie? are we directing 
or actually who is directing our movie. So make your movie interesting, make mistakes, yes, but become aware of them. You know, why did I make them? What did I learn from them? Why did I attract them? What belief do I have? And so on. And that's the process of creation. That's why we're here to understand these things and to evolve with our thinking and with what we are creating. Yesterday, a client asked me, what is my life purpose? And I said, you know, which has been a general question, especially for people in their 30s and 40s, because there's a panic, you know, have I missed my life purpose? <laughs> Your life purpose, everybody's life purpose is to create the best life that they can create for themselves, meaning they have to be conscious, they have to be aware, they have to bridge their conscious with their unconscious, because all of these are just tools to elevate with your consciousness, you know, to be closer to the divine, however you want to phrase it. This is how we learn through having a physical body that is governed by emotional responses, by neural circuits, by hormones. Otherwise, there's nothing to learn if you don't have a body. It's great. It's all telepathy. There is no hurt. There's no death. There's no drama. You know, <laughs> how are you going to learn? So this is a gift. I watched a video recently just popped up. Um, Deepak Chopra, and he was saying about death, like not to be scared of death. And actually, there is no death. Death is actually the death of, you know, the movie Avatar. This is we are the avatar, but our real consciousness is much bigger. And that's reality, not this. So this is really like the matrix that we're experimenting learning so that our entire consciousness can grow. So whoever is pushing your buttons, it's not worth it, but it's for you. It's serving you a purpose. What do I need to improve about myself so that I don't spend my energy reacting to things like that? Plus have a conscious awareness that I choose to do differently because you need to direct yourself. You know, you can't just stay like that and respond to people. You'll be attacked all the time if this is all you're noticing. But once you start to forge a new way, your whole mindset will change. Your whole attitude will change. It will be directed to where you, to where you want to go. Um, so ask these questions. Who am I becoming? What do I need to do to become who I am? Um, what else is possible? And ask your mind a dream. What do I need to do that I haven't done to solve this situation? What am I overlooking that I haven't considered in order to move forward or to meet the right partner or to start a new business? It's all the same. It's all, you know, creative questions, um, opportunities to create the life that we want. Ask the right question. You will get the right answer. And the key thing is let go of the need to receive the answer. I was trying to teach my niece, um, Nadine, who, who's a great um, shaman and and yoga therapists, um, how to use the pendulum. And it was really difficult for her, but she started. So she started texting me questions. Auntie, can you answer this for me with the pendulum? First time, okay, second time, okay, third time. I said, no, you don't rely on a pendulum. You need to take charge and you need to practice in order to have crystal clear intuition because it's a tool. You know, it's like having a Ferrari and what is it doing staying in the garage and you don't even know how to drive it. So these are the innate gifts that we're born with that we need to grow and perfect so that we keep driving and we stay on the highway in order to arrive safely to where we want to go it's not just about safely but it's about you know having an enjoyable life really it's like a movie at the end of the movie you want to say oh really i had a great life i enjoyed it that's the whole point it's it's not to damage you so that you keep coming back and redoing it again until you um master it. I feel like I, I went on for a while, but I really wanted to give you value and my perspective because I've been thinking about these things a lot about how have I changed? You know, what does it mean to turn 60? What does it mean to have four books published this year and hopefully three more next year? And like suddenly all these things are, are possible um, and it does take time. So, you know, don't give up. It was always a dream, sometimes on the back burner, on the front. It doesn't really matter, but I really believe that nothing happens until you are ready. You need to match the energy of what you're trying to create. So it's no good frustrating yourself. Always 
turn the question inwardly. What do I need to do? What do I need to address? You know, what box do I need to come out of in order to make this happen? Then that is conducive. Then there's no trauma, then there's nothing to heal and you would have had a great life. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'd like to ask you. Please ask. Um, I saw that you've um, lost a very sincere friend. Yes, thank and you. And I'm seeing you today, maybe you are wearing black. Not intentionally, but you may wear it. Yeah. And that's, yeah, and I want to ask you, what are you feeling of it? Not all feelings. I mean. What am I what? Feeling of it. About it? About it, yeah. About losing my friend? <sighs> She's a friend. She's a close friend. She's also a cousin. She's like a fourth or a fifth cousin. And we went through a lot together. We've spent many mornings. I would start my day with her. This is about my cousin, Leila Shawa, who passed away a few days ago. She was in her 80s, um, but really young, very passionate. You know, she's responsible or she's the painter of all these paintings that I have because I love her art. It's very colorful, but it's very poignant once you know the meaning behind it. Great loss. Leila had permanent uh, works of art on permanent display in museums in New York, in London, in Oxford, you know, all over the world. So she's, you know, world class and a close friend. She was a friend for like the big 20 years that I've, a big part of my life that I spent in London. So it was a huge loss. But as I was saying, nothing happens before it's time. Maybe she's done her best and it was time to leave. I only regret that I wasn't in London, that I didn't see her personally, you know, eye to eye, um, because I really do miss her. But I, I know she's moved, she's happier, and I know that she's done her best and she's had a great life. And, you know, it's the end of a chapter. And that's why maybe I mentioned the avatar, you know, the avatar is over, but, you know, her consciousness um, is still there. She has another journey to continue. And I hope to see her and all my loved ones one day. So I'm in a strange way looking forward to that. But thank you for mentioning her and for acknowledging it. Thanks, Muhammad. It is a loss. It is a loss. We are very sorry for this. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right, guys. Um, I have enjoyed these meetings, so I think I will keep them up next year. Maybe do them every other month. I don't know, but I want to hear from you. How would you like to keep them up? If you would like to keep them up, would you prefer Zoom or Clubhouse or whatever? Let me know. I think we have a great group. Um, almost the same people keep showing up and hopefully the rest will come back because I know it's difficult times now there's midterm here and you know parents are busy with children and stuff but let me know if you'd like me to do that I've really enjoyed it and I think it's important to kind of give you some kind of support throughout next year too and I thank you for celebrating with me and I'll see you soon thank you very much thank you <laughs> Good night, everyone. You too. Thank you. Good night. Good night.